100% B Wood, take that. Hey, hey, the theme of the show is the threes. We're going to get into that, but right now, the best records in the NBA. You see the Clippers, you see the Pacers, two of the top five teams in the association went head to head on the left coast. And early on, listen, PG, he's been listening to that Roy Jones Jr. Y'all must have forgot. Oh, they're going to remember after that. Ooh, wee. Mmm, <laughs> BG13. Going hard against his former team, Steve Ballmer is there for it. But these Pacers, Smitty, they're offensively efficient. Doug him in buckets. Yeah, they kept playing extremely hard in that first quarter. As you can see, Doug doing a nice job, 18 points, and I think in that first half, just moving without the basketball, knocking down threes. Four for five for three, that's what he was in the first half, but then Morris making it be known. Paul George still doing work, B. Wood. Listen, Paul George definitely is having a Resurgence. A lot of people were down on him after the bubble. He's balling out right now. And speaking of other guys balling out, look at this play by Sabonis. That's just filthy. 19 and 14 in the game. We've seen what he's been, been able to do all season, but we see what Kawhi does on a nightly basis. Man. Ooh, fear the claw. Don't go through your legs, change your direction, make it that quick. Make it look easy, Kawhi. Clippers shot 49% from three. They were knocking him down. DJ Khaled says another one. Man, come on. And Kawhi in the right place at the right time. I'm that type of guy. Kawhi, 17 and 7, five assists as the Clippers, the fourth consecutive game, they've knocked down at least 18 threes, continuing to lead the league in three point percentage. Speaking of threes, Bernard, right there, you see him, he had 20. He spoke after the game specifically about their ability to shoot. I mean, we got some of the best stars in the game today, um, guys that can make plays uh, for other guys. So, um, we're all confident in ourselves, and we're in the main thing is we're confident in each other. And you know that's that's how close we are right now. Um, you know, guys are are sharing the basketball. I, I know we've had some really high assist games, um, and you know we're we're a really good offensive team. So as long as we we hang our hat on the defensive end, offense will take care of itself for us. So um, that's just what we're, we're our, our emphasis has been. Um, and you know, guys guys are letting it go when we have shots. You know, guys aren't turning down. Um, open looks, and, and that's what we need. We need guys to, to step in there and hit some big shots like that. Looking so far first in the NBA in three-point percentage, fifth in three-pointers made. That's become their calling card, Smitty. Yeah, I like, as you can see, bodies are moving, ball moving. Zubak doing a nice job, understands. I catch it, I'm throwing to the corners. Double team right here, get the ball out of your hand, and you can see with Luke Kennard out there with also Kawhi Leonard, Malcolm Brown that couldn't leave Kawhi, left Luke Kennard wide open, and he is shooting it. T. Lou said, be aggressive. Now you have Paul George, as you can see, the cut right now, just the movement. Gets it kicked out to Patrick Beverly. He gets in the act. He knocks down the three. But what I like is these are hockey assists. These are the ball movement. Luke Kennard understands. Throwing it out to Marcus Morris Sr. Now, this was a tough one because he had it rolling. He knocked that one down. But I love the way they are getting out. And, yes, they are understanding great floor spacing. Patrick Patterson knocking it down. They played a little small ball tonight without Serge Ibaka, but it paid off for the Clippers tonight. 27 assists tonight for the Clippers as they continue to make things happen offensively. Speaking of offensively with the Clippers, we know that they've been effective and efficient when it comes to shooting the three. But B. Wood, this bench is something special as well. The bench is something special as well. They got the best performance that uh, they've seen all year out of Marcus Morris. Uh, 20 points, Luke Kennard had 20, Patrick Patterson had uh, 10 points. That's just 50 points just between those three guys right there. Anytime you get that type of production from your bench, you know it's going to be a special night. And then when you look at the fact that all of those guys shoot the three, well, it goes back to what Smitty was talking about with the fact that this uh, this team out there, this team, the Clippers team in L.A., is really, really hitting threes at a high rate. Whatever you think is important is what you will spend your money on. And that is in life and in sports. And in the Clippers this offseason, They've shown us they think the three ball and that three-point line is very important because they spent a lot of money with Mr. Kennard and a lot of money with Morris. And you know at the end of the season, they're trying to get to the, where the money resides, where the money resides. On the way to the Sacramento. And that song, Mary Had a Little Late. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to Sacramento late night. Ooh! Fully whoa! Did he knock oh, it to the man. Stop. Watch this one, B-Wood. Oh! Oh, stop it. I, I mean, mean, wow, Zion. Mm. Bouncing around, bouncing around. Someone must have pit. Someone must have Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Woo. This, this, this looks like the Zion we all came to know and love. This is why he is box office, why you watch it. But De'Aaron Fox had himself a game. He says, I can dunk too. Yes, he can. Man. 
oh my man, he was, I mean, he was flying for real, for real. That, that's one of them old school like dunk contest dunk. No doubt, don't forget about him. He's an all-star, he's a max player, Brandon Ingram, 22, knocking it down from outside. And more of Zion. Oh, he's coming. Yeah, I see everybody getting out of the way. I see everybody's getting out of the way. It's like Mike Tyson back in the day, you know, they didn't want no parts of it. Speaking of, they didn't want no parts of it. De'Aaron Fox, a career high, 43 in the game, 13 assists. He had 16 in the third quarter alone, Smitty. Yeah, I like how he's playing. He's using his quickness. Also, the mid-range game. The game is coming to him slowly, but he still plays fast. More Zion B. Wood. Oh, little, little Duke on Duke, uh, Duke on Duke crime right there. Okay, Zion's getting busy. Zion channeling his inner Dr. J. Dang. Swipe the box. Ridiculous. That looks real fast. Pelicans have lost five straight. Bledsoe says, "Oh, I, I love this move by Bledsoe." <laughs> Which way did he go? Bledsoe, 21 in the game. You see, Zion led the way with 31. Brandon Ingram with 22. After the game, our former colleague, Stan Van Gundy, speaking up for Zion, pay attention to the word slap. And, and I'm going to be honest, I, like, I don't want a $35,000 fine from the league office. I'm just going to say guys like him who are really strong, I mean, he probably should shoot twice as many free throws as he does because he doesn't get knocked off balance and fall down and all of that. Um, they just let him play through one early in the second half. There was one we could hear the slap at the other end. One of the refs said, yeah, I heard the slap too, but I didn't see it. Like, okay, but it's your job to see it. <laughs> no marks. At the ripe old age of 57, LeBron is still doing amazing things. And Dennis Schroeder just lost $100. He said, bet it. And LeBron said, give it here, little boy. The rich just keep getting richer. And after this shot, James Harden, KD, and Kyrie said, enough is enough. Let's join forces to beat this guy. By far, the biggest news is the beard going to Brooklyn. So now the beard said, hey, the ruse is up. I'm taking off this fat suit. This trio is going to be amazing to watch. I'm excited. But think about it. Kyrie was Robin. Now is he Alfred? Is he the Riddler? Is he the Joker? And to get James, you obviously had to give up the house. People coming off the bench. Hopefully they don't look as bad as these guys out here playing outside. James Harden heard all that slander and said, hold my beer. Because guess what? He went absolutely ham first game with the Nets. A 30-point triple-double. Nutty. The biggest thing about this is that gigantic smile on that man's face. It wasn't pretty, but at the end of the day, he got it done. And hey, we look at how dangerous the Nets are, even without Kyrie. Remember when Robert Ori wasn't playing until the playoffs? That's what they're doing at Taco Fall. This guy is a Boston legend already, shooting bank shot threes and hitting them with the gigantic, super slow-mo Euro step. And y'all better put some respect on his name because Taco's coming for you. Guys, you know, the biggest news, obviously, this whole season, it's not Harden, it's not Kyrie, it's me, finally. The Cavs have renounced my free agent rights. I have a huge decision with my family to figure out where I'm going. I don't know whether I'm going to go to Chipotle or Qdoba. Please stay tuned. Thank you for your patience. Shouts out to Channing. Put some guac on that Chipotle. Luca, oh man, December, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't that bad, but January has been balling out of control. 30, give me that Dallas record a lot better than it was before. Uh, the Mavs down six rotational players. They begin a stretch of five games in seven days. However, the Bulls, they lost four straight, but they are impressive in this one, Smitty. Yes, indeed. Getting out and running, as you can see, Garrett Temple. I love it with Zach Levine. Kobe White, Derek Temple, they running with speed. Luka knocking down threes. Want to see a little bit more of that? His percentage has been low. Yes, it has. Under 30% so far. Knocked down six in this game. The step back. Oh, yeah, that's true, B. Wood. Oh, yes, man. Listen, that's not been a part of his game that's been strong, but he was knocking it down tonight. When he's hitting that shot, there's nothing you can do with it. Zach, tough night at the office. One for eight after four straight games of 30. But then Luka going dumb, dancing. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. That's on the run. Hey, that's got it. That's got to be the number one play on top five plays. Luke of the Don with a cigar. How do you defend that? You don't. Laurie Marketing. 
making his presence known. Quality contributions from the bench as well. 61 points from the Bulls bench, B. Wood. Listen, and that's that's what it's all about. It, they can't just sit around and wait for Zach Levine to score 30 every night. Other people, other guys on that team have to step up. But tonight, it was the whole Bulls bench. Larry Markin in a season high 29 in the game, along with 10 rebounds. Luca, the youngest player in NBA history, with a triple double of 35, 15, and 15. Oh, and by the way, he surpassed. Michael Jeffrey Jordan on the all-time triple-double list while wearing those 23s. Luca, this is a lot of words to say that Luca is good and he puts up numbers very quickly. In his 11th game of the season, he already has 300 points, 11 rebounds, and 100, 100 assists. Like I said, a lot of numbers. All it says is Luca is really good. So we're just looking at what Luca's been able to do. Down six players, obviously shorthanded right now but once they're back healthy how dangerous is this team in the west Mitty? they're very dangerous because i love the way the other guys are playing and they all fit i mean all the guys are sitting out they play their role and with this guy he gets some easy shots porzingis obviously is the key he's starting to look like he's shaping back into form but luca to don right here i mean for a guy to have this type of skill set in command of the basketball right now in command of his team it's a treat to watch somebody at that size being able to handle it that way. Because I always say when you're a big point guard, if you never turn your back, that means you have handles. He definitely has handles. B. Wood, is he going to be in the thick of the MVP conversation once it's all said and done? It really comes down to how many wins the Mavericks have. We know his game is going to put him in there, but when you look at the MVP, it's always been a combination of the guy with the best stats combined with the most wins, and right now Dallas is lacking in the wins department. If Luka can get up into the top three in the Western Conference, he can possibly be the MVP. But if not, might be looking maybe at old man James. Mm, speaking of old man James, nice segue. I'm so Brooklyn. We needed opportunities, so we took them. So you missed his historic 30-point triple-double with the world's greatest leaders and Dr. Martin Luther King. Five games in our family of networks closed out the night with the Lakers and the Warriors. All times are Eastern. And for a look at the rest of the week, from a fantasy perspective, here's Kelly Stewart with the Weekly Six. Stewart for the Weekly Six on NBA TV. Lock in your weekly picks with NBA Pick'em Weekly Six. Predict the winners of six NBA matchups during the week for your chance to win. Let's head out west where the Pelicans should be well rested, but that's not enough for me to step in front of the Utah Jazz and Donovan Mitchell at home. Give me the Jazz here. Up next in the Atlantic Division, Boston is headed to Philly. I'd love to back the home team here, but with Jason Tatum returning to the lineup on Wednesday, give me the Celtics in a nail biter. Suns arrive in Houston on Wednesday. I know a lot has been made of the James Harden exit, but don't overthink this. Christian Wood is a man on a mission to fill that void. I believe at home, he and the Rockets will get the job done. Next up, Giannis and the Bucks have a tough one at home on Thursday. It's never fun to go against LeBron and the Lakers, but I'm gonna do it. Bucks win this one in the forum. I would love to give the Pels a shot to pull an upset in Utah, especially after just facing this team on Tuesday, but they have some kinks to work out until I can back them on the road. Jazz again for me here. And last but not least, an exciting one in Brooklyn as the Miami Heat head up north. Lots of love for the Nets with their updated roster, but I do believe they need some more time to gel. I'll take the Mork's complete unit here with Miami. Don't forget to make your picks at NBA.com slash weekly six for your chance to win. Good luck. It's a great honor to showcase MLK. Looking at the games on the schedule, starting with you, Smitty, which one are you looking forward to watching? You know, all of them, Ro, because of Dr. Martin Luther King, everything he's done, and great job by the league with David Stern and Adam Silver, just honoring him and getting a chance to play on this day is special, so I'm looking forward to all of them. B. Wood, your thoughts? I'm looking forward to seeing the Bucks take on Brooklyn. That's, where I, that's what I want to see. Everybody wants to see these new-look uh, Brooklyn Nets. A lot of people have crowned them and said they already – Dancing to the Western, Co I mean Eastern Conference Finals. I want to see what they look like against Giannis. Just to note, Kyrie Irving is listed as questionable after mm. missing six games for personal reasons. Will be interesting to see if he gets.